on real stories of the highway patrol. Armed robbers. There's two vehicles chasing each other. Playing a dangerous game on a Florida road, and state troopers want to stop it. We have an individual that's on a cellular phone calling it in. No big sign. Fist flying, a family feud, and the state police have to sort it out. And he's in the house tearing the favorite thing, beating on my husband. I had the shorty had to wrestle him down and hit him. He's crazy tonight. All right, let's get out of here. A few beers, a fast drive home, and an Arizona officer suddenly locked in a life and death struggle. These are the real hey, stories of the highway patrol. And everything is gonna be Tonight's real stories are from the roads and highways of Florida, West Virginia, and Arizona. We ride with the state police and highway patrol, recording events as they actually happened. We begin in Miami, where the Florida Highway Patrol has just been alerted to an armed robber. There's two vehicles chasing each other, and uh, we have an individual that's on a cellular phone calling it in, and that's where we're en route to right now. Several units coming to it. This is not the vehicle. Okay, Joe, I'm 1097 at the, with a black Bronco at this time, at the 2 and 5 9. Okay, apparently uh, these people have been involved in an armed robbery right now. We're trying to figure it out. All right. Why is your other car chasing you? Because he came over the house and he started giving me a hard Where's the time. house? My apartment's on um, Harbor Island. Where? Harbor Island, North Bay Village. Okay. okay. So he came so over. The chase started. Yeah. In five. And he was giving me a hard time and he was pushing me around and everything. And I knew what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. So I just went to do it. And he was chasing me because he wanted to, you know, to catch up to me. What, what is he going to catch up to you for? You still haven't told me that. It's got to do with drugs. No, it doesn't have to do with drugs. Okay, it has to do with the fact that I use drugs. I don't know what I was doing. I just woke up off drugs, you know? I mean, I just... You woke up drugged out? You don't know that yeah. you were driving reckless? I knew I was trying to get away from him because I didn't want to get hurt. Very good answer. I mean, I was just trying to go to best place that I knew of. And I asked my girlfriend to come with me so I could, so she could take the car back. Your girlfriend has no idea what's, what's going on. Is she high on drugs too? No, she doesn't do any drugs. She, she has no idea what's she going does. on, none whatsoever. Well, she doesn't want to incriminate herself anyway, I guess. Oh, you know? okay. I mean, why should she? You I put, I put her in this. People. I put her in this, you know? Okay, an officer who saw the two cars chasing each other. And he's driving the Bronco, of course. The victim is saying, there's a victim in the other car that's saying it's a, it's a 29. But we don't know yet. We have to wait for him to come over. Okay. He's going to come over here now? Yeah, he's going to come over. Okay. It was a hump. Yay, big. They went flying across that, across 79th Street. So what's she telling you, man? It can't be. Ain't no way. Well, she's saying that she doesn't know what's going on. Uh, Dude, she's probably she, so high up on dope right now. That's, the way she was sitting in that truck riding, man, I thought, you know, I thought it was a robbery, the way they was doing. Uh, and the way that guy was on the cellular phone talking about it, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's something more to it than what they tell it. This is the individual that was chasing the truck, uh, was calling the police on a cellular phone and letting them know which way they were coming and going. What kind of robbery is this? Mom um, robbery? No, he broke in. He busted the chain on the door. The first day, I don't know how he got back in yesterday unless he took the glass off. He was living with you? No. He's saying that you was following him because he wanted to turn himself in. Well, that's you what, wanted to turn himself in. You yeah. wanted to turn him in before he did. Yeah, he's been saying for the last week he's going to turn himself in. And he he won't go? No, he won't go. He showed up at my house uh, the day mind. before yesterday. He wanted to borrow money. Yeah. And I had let him sleep in my house one night and all that. You know, I was going to take him in the next day. And so he wanted to borrow money, and I said no. And he left, and that was the day he robbed me. 
How many did you take? You know, he, well, the first time he took my CD player, my guitar amp, and a tape deck, and then yesterday he came back and took about three or four hundred dollars in change. I don't know how much it is. It's the change that I, you know, when you get home at night. And um, you know, I'm not out. All I want the guy to do is get in treatment. I don't care about my stuff. If he's got the pawn tickets where he hopped it, I'll go buy it back. All I really want is the guy to get help. Oh, if yeah. you guys got enough to get him in and to keep him locked up, we really don't have anything on him except. Well, he ain't got no traffic. Like traffic, like traffic, like traffic right now. Well, he, he, man, I, I saw him running stoplights, red lights. And, as far as traffic, he's going in. Yeah, he's yeah. going to go to jail reference traffic. But that's right. not going to hold him too long. What's going on right here is the individual that's in custody here uh, burglarized this gentleman's uh, residence. Uh, the other gentleman is trying to get him some help because uh, he's got a real bad drug problem, and he recognizes that, and he's telling me that he wants some help, that he really wants some help. Um, so what he did, he burglarized this gentleman's house, and I guess this gentleman, all he was doing was just following him to try to get him to stop so he can turn himself in and so that he can get some help. And the female that was with this individual here in this vehicle that was being chased, the passenger, the passenger come to find out uh, she's got a warrant also, uh, okay. so she's going to go down to jail. It, it's sad you know because you know you take somebody that you trust or you think that you trust under your wing and in turn they turn around and, and, and steal from you they, they take your property from you and uh, so it's an, it's an unfortunate situation the suspect was charged with burglary and grand theft he faces a possible 35 years in jail and fifteen thousand dollars in fines the female was arrested on a previous warrant the suspect's friend recovered the stolen merchandise for some time prior to this incident the friend had been trying to help the suspect deal with his addiction to crack cocaine. Right now we're in ground to a uh, fight in progress. We don't really have all specifics at this time. Uh, several subjects inside a dwelling right now that they're fighting and supposed to be under the influence of alcohol. He hit my car right here, he right here, take off, and right man. here, and then he put it in drive and went to pull out and I hollered at him and he stopped. Where's he at now? He's, He's at home right now. What's going on? Huh? Man, that's a bunch of bells. What's wrong? Well, I'm a pack all day, man. You buried your path all but still you don't have to carry on like this. You hit that man's car back there by... Huh? Okay. What we're going to do is we'll get your driver's license, your registration, and proof of insurance. We're going to do the action report. Okay? And he come in the house and hit my husband. My, that's his, I'm his grandma adopted him, but this is his stepdaddy. This is his mommy's husband. And he's in the house tearing up everything, yeah, beating on my husband. I had to, Shorty had to wrestle him down and hit him. He's crazy tonight. He didn't get hurt. He's having like that. I don't know. I didn't start no big scene, though. Well, you had not started to see state police would be up here, okay? Evidently he did. Let's go ahead and get your driver's license and registration for the No problem, bro. Yeah, just a little bit fender bender, you know. Yeah, but still, you don't drive off like that. Need your registration, man. That's not it. If I if I ain't it, I'll give you the regular proof, okay? You know, I ain't gonna give you no hard time or nothing. Is anyone else been running the store soon? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, ain't nobody else been around it. All right. I've made them pull it in the yard and get out of it. Here's some uh, there in the front seat. Some what? I called Tell you what, why don't you go ahead and step out of there? No, I got a, I got Step a Fowler. No orange man, you ain't talking to you, Daddy. No, I ain't no there with you, buddy. Let him choose it. And when you come home tomorrow, I hope you got more manners than you did tonight. If this happens again, you'll go we'll call again. You'll go back. I don't appreciate you fighting with mommy neither. Well, Richie, I'm your mother and I don't appreciate fighting with me neither. And I don't like you fighting with my mother. We don't like to do this no more to you than what you did to us. It looks to me like you got a black eye from fighting with us. 
Here, I'll put you on a shirt. You don't want to go without a shirt. I asked him, they said. They said he hadn't had anything to drink since that happened. Yeah. But, uh, what a cigarette, though. Well, you ain't going to smoke it now. Let's go. Can you wait and get your cigarettes? No. We're going to do that. If, he, if he's going to take them to jail, but he ain't going to smoke them in the car. Go get him. Go get him. Okay. We ended up having to charge him with battery and possession of alcoholic beverages under the age of 21 for the fact that he was 20 years old. Uh, he had probably a 12-pack of beer in his possession. Uh, we then transported him to Logan County Jail where his family will probably pick him up tomorrow. He'd been fighting with his dad. The injured grandfather suffered a knot to the side of his head. He was treated and released. The family filed assault charges but withdrew them the next day. The suspect was charged with battery and public intoxication. He faces up to one year in jail. He was released on $50 bail pending trial. A funeral of a relative was cited as the cause of his drinking. There have been no further incidents. Who hit you? No, nobody hit him. Nobody hit him. Who hit him? Yeah. I don't know. Next, a bar fight and a victim in denial has the highway patrol asking questions. We've been drinking down here probably for years and years and years. <laughs> Brother. What a night. Nice. Oh, Coming up, a drunken celebration turns deadly as a convicted killer turns on an Arizona officer. Right, right, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. I'm the man. He's like an injured man. Okay? Yeah. Who hit you? Yeah. No, nobody hit me. Nobody hit me. Who hit him? Yeah. I don't know. Rick is the one who called me at the store. That guy anywhere. Well, nobody hit me. Nobody hit me. Nobody hit me. You're going to need some stitches on your eye there. No, nah, it's all right. That's no, all right. That's no, all right. Hey, look, we've been drinking down here probably for years and years and years. And, uh, you know, it's like... Fall out here. You need something for your head there. I'll get, let me no, get in the back right. of my head car right. and get you it's something, okay? Right. Let me get no, your no, ID and I'll right. get you something. No, it's all right. It's all right. No, it's all right. That's all right. I got some more towels in here. He was assaulted by some of his drinking buddies. Why, I don't know. There's some band-aids for you. Here. Yeah, here. Put, take your head off. Here. No. No, it's, yeah, straight down. I'm just saying. No, give me a job. Put me to work. Damn, I'm 50 years old. Look, put me to work. Oh, you got shoes on? You're going to take care of him? Be responsible for him then? Okay, yes, go ahead and get, get your jacket. I knew that he was intoxicated, and I felt maybe he was going to talk and tell us, tell us who uh, assaulted him, but he doesn't want to tell, so. His wife's there, our girlfriend of five years. She's going to take responsibility for him. She hadn't been drinking. And he refuses all medical treatment, so we have to let him go. The woman was called to the scene by the bar owner. The victim used to work as a laborer in the oil fields around Bakersfield, California. His attackers were never found. The case is closed. The victim is still unemployed. The Arizona Department of Public Safety provided the file for our next true story. A man having one last night out before going to jail comes up against Arizona Highway Patrol Officer John Han. Our thanks to the Arizona Department of Public Safety for their assistance in bringing you the actual events. Little brother. What a nice. Oh, come on, let's go, little brother. One month ago, in a drunken rage, Mike Garcia beat a man to death with a baseball bat. Out on bail, tomorrow, he's pleading guilty to manslaughter. <laughs> He's been out drinking all night and into the morning with his brother for what could be his last fling for many years to come.
Arizona Highway Patrol Officer John Hahn is working DUI enforcement, looking for drunk drivers. Sam, I want you to take care of Ginny for me, man. I'm counting on you, man. Man, don't worry. <laughs> Before joining the Arizona Department of Public Safety, Officer Hahn worked for the Tempe Police Department for seven years. Oh, man, you gotta be kidding me, man. Man, you're busted. Uh, what am I gonna do, man? Here's what you tell him. I'm sorry, officer. I'm sorry. My wife just went into labor. Well, do you need me to call the fire department for her or anything? No, her mother's with her. Well, then there's no reason for you to be speeding then, right? Hey, partner, can I get you to sit back in the car for me, please? How much have you had to drink today? Yeah, two beers. Well, let's step over here to the curb. I need to give you some field tests. First thing I want you to do is I want you to count on your fingers for me just like this. I want you to go one, two, three, four. The officer four, notices that the man seems intoxicated and runs a few field sobriety tests on him. His experience tells him that the man's blood alcohol level is probably well over the legal limit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's, that's enough. Before you step over here, put your hands on the car. You're under arrest for driving while under the influence of intoxicating liquor. Give me your hand behind your back here. Please don't arrest me, officer. Please don't arrest me. Mike! Mike! What are you doing? What are you doing? Mike! Mike! Let's get out of here! Oh, Mike! Mike! Let's get out of here! Mike! Uh, go on! Go on! Get out of here! We'll blow your head off, man! Oh, A killer with nothing to lose. The rest of Officer Han's true story when we come back. Out on bail for manslaughter. Mike Garcia goes drinking with his brother. When Arizona Highway Patrol Officer John Hahn tries to arrest him, the killer shoots the officer with his own gun. His brother tries to take the keys to the patrol car, but he can't get them out. Let's go! Let's get out of here! Without his glasses and in shock, Han stumbles to his car to radio for help. 999, officer shot. Officer down, officer needs assistance. But with the ignition turned off, the radio is dead. He turns the motor on and tries again. Down. Officer needs assistance. 999. Mike, you're in trouble. Mom. Told you, man. Man, what are you doing? Tim, I told you. I knew it was going to happen. After dropping off his brother, Garcia goes to his girlfriend's house. I just shot a cop. Put the gun down. I said I just shot a cop. A Phoenix Police Department helicopter locates Han. An ambulance takes him to the hospital, where he is rushed into surgery. Mike, no, I can't run! The gunman died only minutes after shooting Officer Han. His girlfriend left the country two weeks after this incident. His brother was convicted of first-degree hindering of an officer. Because he was not directly involved in the assault and had no prior arrest record, he received three years probation. John Hahn had four surgeries on his shoulder before returning to full duty a year later. He is now an organized crime unit investigator. After this incident, departmental policy changed. Officers now receive a checkup call from dispatch within five minutes of any stop. Ambulance or other emergency vehicle comes up behind you with red lights flashing. Your response should be automatic. Move right out of the traffic lane if possible and stop. Emergency vehicle operators report lots of other responses, which means some misunderstand what they're supposed to do. Several reactions are actually hazardous stopping dead in traffic, stopping in the intersection, and in some cases, pulling left. The correct move is simple. A red light means move to the right. What does it want to release? I pushed the brake and it doesn't want to let go. It has that, that long thing. I don't know. Okay. I'll just 
stay right here for a minute. You see that lock here? I'm trying to light thing in. Shift lock really? I don't know how that is. I just got the car to You got the car on? Okay. Oh, no, there I go. Okay, okay. Where'd she go? Okay. From the men and women of the Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America, thank you for watching. Woo!